Okay, I'm going to walk you through Desmos Activity 2 a little bit just to give you some hints. Um, the first part you will see I tend to um, talk with the TA and see what gets missed the most. I will say that a lot of times students want to bring that 4 up, but you could actually separate it as 3 fourths times 1 over x squared, right? So just be careful with that. Here's where you really get where you read my announcements because I always have questions every semester on this last one for any T, which we're going to even talk about today. Um, but I actually give this to you in the announcements and group me and all that kind of good stuff. All right. Also, um, you know, I get students that won't read. I know reading is hard. I don't like it either. Uh, but when you go into web work, you're going to see with your quiz, you have three attempts and you should take them all at the same time, right? So uh, be sure you've set aside time that you're going to take them. The reason why is you have to upload your work of your best attempt. And if you come back and upload three days later, it's going to be a little fishy, right? So be sure you know you get three attempts. We take your highest attempt. The grade in web work is not necessarily your grade. Um, the work will be looked at. Uh, no work, automatic zero. So please don't make those. I don't like those zeros. They make me cry. All right. So we're going to see what the big difference between ARC and IRC is. If you remember the first activity, you had the little doggy and the mop. And I said, always get like your title. So you're, you're heading here. And then this is what you want to snap these on. So this is a good slide with a lot of good definition. So I kind of go through some things and I see exactly IRC at exact a point. But you see how those are snapping on there? The limit is the IRC. The slope of the tangent line is IRC and the derivative, which we'll get into even more. Okay, so you see all those are snapped on. If the IRC is the tangent line, then the ARC is the secant line, which consists of two points entering between the first and two hours the slope formula. This one may not make a lot of sense until you do the first group work, but when you have a table, this is pretty much the only way you can find a rate is with the um, ARC. So how did I do? Ooh. All right, cool. I won't always do these for you every week, but I think the first time making sure you understand how they're snapping and all that kind of good stuff. All right, so we want to talk about we're throwing a rock in the air and we want to find the rate that it's or the speed that and these are words that you're going to see me say over and over and over um, that is traveling between one and 1.5 seconds that screams ARC, right? Because that's two points and this is the speed of the rock between those two points. The IRC now if I want it at exactly one second, that is the speed. I mean, remember speed is rate and all that kind of good stuff. So what you're going to do is you're going to be going through and solving these. And again, I won't do everything for you, but you, you should see that we have the two points. Oh, let me do a, that first. I did a, we call that a forward slash so I could have a, um, was this called a fraction? <laughs> It's early and I haven't had a lot of coffee yet. Oops. And h of 1 over 1.5 minus 1. So that's basically what you're doing, right? And meaning that you're going to be plugging in, and I try to use, um, oops, parentheses, um, brackets, and all that kind of good stuff. And so plus 7, 1.5. So if you look at this, you can see this is negative 2x. Where you see x, plug in the 1.5, plus 7 where you see x, plug in the 1.5. That's the left side. Now I do the same thing and I plug in 1, 7 over 1, and then I guess I can go ahead and make that 0 0.5. And when you get your answer, only type a number. Only type a number. Only, oh no, don't you type any, any words or any units yet because you're going to see the next it will ask you for units. All right. 
And so look at the difference with the IRC. The IRC now, I call this the gap that you're trying to take two points and get that second point closer and closer to this one point. Probably more um, correct, I don't know if what you want to say, is really this H, because that's that gap, is the error. It's just how much error can you have? And so students always ask me at the first of the semester, well, what do you use for H? I don't know. What do you use for H? There's no magic number. I tend to use these numbers because they're small. I just can't use zero. So, I mean, that's kind of the, the, big, the big to do, right? All right. So if we did ARC, we are now going to do IRC. And there are three methods. I'm going to go to the next slide that you can use. Um, I am never going to tell you, well, I don't want to say my way or the highway because some of y'all know shortcuts that you can't use yet. You do need to use the limit formula. Many students like, um, in fact, let me see. No, I guess I can't close them. Many students like where you just plug in numbers, okay, at exactly one second, one and then some error. And the reason they like this is because there's that meme, right? I, I used to like math until all the letters, and it's like, well, that's not even funny. Um, <laughs> all the variables, right? And so some students like this. And this works fine, but you have to be careful because you have to understand how you get your final answer because there might be decimals and all that kind of good stuff. Then some students like this method where you plug in your X value that you're interested in, the 1, and um, and then at the very end, you let H go to zero and you get a numeric answer. Okay, so you will get the slope. I prefer this way. And once again, I'm not saying my way or the highway, but the reason that I prefer this way is I know that I have a function here. H of x equals negative 2x squared plus 7x. And when I work this out with this one right here, I know that I am going to end with an actual derivative function. And this function will be a function of x, where then I can plug in my number. Okay, so once again, I leave this up to you. Only plug in a number here and then you'll put in your units. All right, so when you do this type of work, right, whenever you're doing all of this, it's always nice to know what you're doing and, and why, why you are doing it, okay? So I always tell students the best thing to do is always first graph your function, Second, if you plug in your one and your 1.5, you should have gotten five and six. So there's your point. Now what I want you to do is I want you to add a secant line. How in the world do I add a secant line? Do you know the formula for the secant line? So, ooh, I don't like that. Let me get something else. So a secant line, secant line, is you find your, so this was this, if I can recall, da, la, 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 la. and whatever you got for this answer is your slope. And, and in fact, I'll tell you, because you just saw it, that I typed it, that's 6 minus 5, and of course it's 0 0.5. Don't care about that right now. All right, so your secant line equation, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So that's going to be m. This you can use either point. I don't know. I'll use one because um, decimals make me nervous. So when x is 1, y is 5. And you plug your value in right there. And then x minus, oops, I already know what my x1 is, is 1. And now here you're going to solve for y. And that is what you are going to type in right here. And if you did it correctly, you should see a line that goes through those two points. If you did it correctly. All right, what about the IRC? So the IRC is the tangent line at one particular point. 
So this is going to be what you got here. And once again, that's M. So I guess what the equation for a tangent line is, it's just the, the equation of a line, right? And so I know that my y1, when my x is 1, is going to be 5, whatever you got from up there, and then x minus 1, and then once again, solve for y. If you did this correctly, you should have a line that is tangent to only that one point. And you're going to type these equations in, okay? If they're not, if they don't look like what I drew, then you probably need to go back and check your algebra. All right, um, this is just you interpreting. Tell me what, what this flying rock ARC and IRC means. Uh, then I want you to move into an actual application. Now, what I do with, this is kind of like having data, right? I can see that I have some, some points right here. And so the first thing I need to do is try to try to figure out what those points are. I think that is 0, 1. And these are what? 2, 4, 6, 8. Who do we appreciate? And so this is 2, 4. And so I think that point is at 2, 4. The other thing that I'm looking at is I'm, I'm watching this little dude here. Whee! and he's going to go through those points and he's ooh, he's going up here and if you didn't learn anything else about covid you learned what an exponential function looks like so this looks very exponential right okay i don't really know what the function is and you could cheat and you could go to the next slide and it tells you but i feel it's exponential so if i type in my i don't even know do i have to put the f of x we'll do it we'll do it just in case equals two to the x power and I submit that you're going to see it drew the line and it went through those points so apparently that is the correct function again how could I have gotten this one looking first knowing it was exponential right you could have tried e to the x that wouldn't have went through those points but then looking at here if I have two how could I have I gotten to four two squared how have I gotten to 1, 2 to the 0 power? All right. And so now here it's asking, this is just an xy table. So 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the second power is 4. Now it's asking what this change is. Well, that's just 4 minus 1. So the change in, the, in cubic millimeters. And now here is your average rate of change. Well, that's the change in your function that we just found over the change in time, 2 minus 0, and then I'll let you decide. Hopefully, you can see which units to use. All right, <clears throat> so now here, it's asking me to find at exactly two months, and that kind of screams IRC to me, right? Because at exactly one point, so I have this function, f of x equals 2 to the x, and I already forgot what it wanted me to do, at exactly 2 months. So what it's asking me to do is find this. And that is find my derivative, right, or my limit. And so that's my limit as h goes to 0 of 2 to the x plus some error, minus 2 to the x all over h. Now, the first example we did, the algebra was easy. Anytime you have exponentials or logs, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to do the number method, right? You're going to want to plug in numbers. Well, what is x? They said at x equals 2. What is h? I don't know. How about that? And then, and where did I get that? From my head. It just sounded like a good small number. And then you'll throw this in your calculator. Okay, so sometimes you can't just, you know, simplify this all the way down into a function. It's just a little difficult. And like I mentioned, it's typically um, exponentials and logs. And you'll see, um, in, oh, in this case, I just ask you to make sure you have a good understanding. Pretend I went through those two points. <laughs> that was really bad, right? Let's see if I can do it. Oh, I'm just asking you to actually draw your um, 
secant line between the two points and then at zero equals two you are drawing and this is just me trying to see do you understand that this is my tangent line and do you understand that this was my secant line and then also let's get to red right here also that this was my function and it's just trying to get you um you know where you start graphing things right and just even looking at this to be able to tell what the graph looks like um, anytime you deal with table data i mentioned this at, at the beginning with the card sort is it's pretty easy to find the slope between two points right it'd be pretty easy to find that but what if i asked you to find the average the instantaneous rate of change at exactly 0.4 seconds well there's no you can't use the limit formula because you don't have a function so all you want to do okay in this case is use what is closest and in this case it would be this value if it was something like 0.2 then you have two values closest right and so you would find the arc for both and you would average them all right hopefully that you didn't change your major you're so smart let me know how you are doing i read through these so i can see areas that i need to you know talk about a little bit more see if you're if this is kind of helping your understanding once again there is nothing you have to do once you finish you can simply close your browser and then you are done